Okay, you guys, I think I'm the only one here right now. We didn't really advertise this live. I don't know where Angie is. Um, we were supposed to do this together at 10 a.m. I cannot get my Zoom to connect to YouTube. So I'm doing this through YouTube. So Angie, if you see this, I guess later on we'll do the Barbie movie because I do have some other filming that I have to do today. So let me see here. I am going to um, talk to you guys about a few things. Um, and I, oh, good morning. Hey, Steve. Okay, cool. I'm glad I see somebody here because I didn't know if I was talking to myself or not. Y'all, I'm not, if you've been on my channel for a while now, I don't really do lives. Lives aren't really my thing. I do lives on other people's channels. So I'm totally comfortable doing lives, but because of the nature of my work, the nature, hey, Brittany, because of the nature of, um, what Esoteric Atlanta does, which is a deep dive channel, I tend to like to pre record because I like to be able to um, to edit and put pictures in and make it more um, cohesive as far as like the story tell storytelling aspect of deep dives. And again, I don't know where Angie is. I could not get the uh, Zoom to work. I'm going to blame that on Mercury Retrograde. So Angie, if you are watching, um, we will do the Barbie. We'll do a part two with the Barbie recap because I really do want to talk about the Barbie movie. Um, but there's a few things I want to talk about too. So maybe this is good that I'm by myself. I wanted to address So the reason why I wanted to talk about the Barbie movie with Angie and Angie saw it too um, is because there was a really deep message within that movie. And what I fear has happened when I've, I've been speaking about this for a long time on my channel. Last night, I'll give you guys an example. Last night, my boyfriend and I watched this really great documentary on Netflix. And I cannot remember the name of it right now, but it was about World War II. And it had to do with the... Um, the uh, the the men that were in the Nazi uh, army and and why they did what they did like why were they able to uh, I'm trying to watch my words here because we're only two minutes in on YouTube um, but but why were they able to do the killings you know like what made what makes humans malleable when it comes to doing evil things. And it was a very interesting documentary. Again, I cannot remember the name of it, but it's on Netflix. I would highly suggest anybody watch it because it really looks at the complexities of what it means to be human. But one of the things that was mentioned um, was when they were talking to these after World War II during the Nuremberg trials, when they were talking to these men, they asked him, like, did you see the Jewish people as being human beings? And I thought that was such a powerful statement because what's happening not just in the normie world but also in the truth of world is this vigilante violence that is very scary and so my question to a lot of truthers is do you not see actors or artists or mu musicians as human beings or are you just going to pick up your pitchfork and kill everyone because of the industry that they work in because if that's the case then you're no different from any of the other genocides that have happened across our planet. And our the side that I would want to be on, the, the God that I serve is a God of of um of mercy. Steve, it might be, it might be the forgot. I, I, it, it's new. It's new on Netflix, but um that might be it. I'll I'll put it after we get done with the live, I'll I'll double check and I'll put it in the description box so people can can check it out. You know, the side that I want to be on, and I know I've got a lot of great people in the chat right now, a lot of great people in our signal group. And I think we can all agree that the side that we want to be on is the side of mercy, grace, and healing. And every single industry in this world has been corrupted by the bad guys, right? Every single industry. So none of us are, oh, but God, by the grace of God, go I. None of us are excluded from having some corruption in our lives. Now, with that being said, the religious practices of the of the 1%, we'll say, the, the, the controllers, are so horrific. And you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't need, I can't say it on YouTube. It's so horrific though, that only a small percentage of people actually practice this, right? Because if, if everybody knew about it, they would have been exposed a long time ago. So a lot of these actors like Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, a lot of these actors, we have no proof that they are actually a part of this nefarious group. We have no proof. 
right? And seeing pictures of people like covering their eyes or something like that, that's not proof. Um, because you think about these actors and these actresses, they're trying to do a job they're, and they, they want to entertain people. They want to be artists. They want to, they want to work in the, in the beautiful industry of, of human emotion. Right. And they're, they're getting these, these parts and they're, they're doing this marketing and they show up for these photo shoots. They don't know what the photographer is going to ask them to do. They have no idea. And so when they, the photographer tells them to cover their eye, they're just going to cover their eye. That's, that's not evidence. That's not proof that they've done anything nefarious and awful. And so I, for one, we know that Mr. T often says law and order, law and order, law and order. Well, law and order is amazing. And if you go through a court of law, you know, speculation is, is not admissible. There has to be evidence. And so I, I wanted to kind of talk about that first with the Barbie movie, which we'll get deeper into with, with Angie. And I wanted to kind of, I, I was really thinking about this. I, I'm going to use myself as an example as to why we can't judge what um, other truthers are saying about other people without proof or evidence. Um, first of all, because I know a lot of the people in this in this side of the internet, nobody really has sources. I'm just going to be I, I actually do have some sources with the Atlanta Police Department that have confirmed some things for me. But even the things that, that I have information I've received, I've never shared because I don't feel like it's appropriate. And I don't want to cause any type of, of um, unnecessarily unnecessary, I don't know, shenanigans that, that don't need to exist. Right. The most important thing about this Great Awakening is that we wake up to who we really are and we start to take our own sovereignty back. And that's that's the difference between EDO, which is outer knowledge, and Gnosis, which is inner knowledge. But again, I'm going to use myself as an example. So a few months back, and I've actually got my whole file right here on my desk. Oh, probably six, seven, eight months ago, something like that. I was asked by a woman named Kim Kukic to do a weekly show on a telegram channel called Enough is Enough. Now, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I have made it very clear that I believe in paying it forward. And because I have been blessed with a big platform, I have really tried to pay it forward to smaller, um, smaller platforms so that they can get their work out. And I'm actually going to be pulling back on that some because I've been so burned by doing this. I never, you know, I've been used a lot, all that kind of stuff. But at this point, I was asked by Kim if I would do, I didn't know Kim that well. I had met her you know, off and on through some different connections through YouTube. And I would go get lunch with her um, in Florida from time to time. But that was that was about it. That was the I didn't know what she was doing on tele. I was never on Telegram. Honestly, like I don't have time. I, I am a researcher. I do deep dives. And so most of my day, if I'm not filming or if I'm not a guest on somebody else's channel, if I'm not editing, I'm sitting here researching. And during my off time, when I step away from work, I typically don't watch other like truther videos or anything like that. I, I typically try to disconnect completely so that I can recalibrate. So anyway, so I had no idea what was going on on Telegram and this was a Telegram show. So I agreed to it. And I on Thursdays for a few months around it was around two o'clock in the afternoon on Thursdays. I would do this telegram show called Enough is Enough. And I met some really great people doing this show. I partnered with a guy named Michael, who's going to be helping me in the future. And we literally on Thursdays would basically just talk about shadow work and talk about really taking what, what taking your sovereignty back really means when it means when it comes to understanding who you are as a soul. And so some of those shows would last up to four hours. And, and I, I really did enjoy doing them because I love having a platform where I could actually speak to people, where people could actually ask questions and I could try to help them. And, you know, I, I really had a positive experience with the audience. And I really hope that I was at least a motivator for some people to start to take their power back. And hopefully in return, they will motivate their own friends and family members to start to take their power back. But over time, so so again, so every Thursday I was doing this completely for free. We're never paid to go on other people's channels. I was giving my time. Sometimes these shows would last up to four hours. On top of that, I'm also running my own channel. I'm also doing other shows. I'm also so it was it was a lot. It was a lot. 
And I found out a few months, around May, I found out that Gordon, the guy who runs the, the channel Enough is Enough, had said some pretty horrific things about me, mainly that I was transgender, that I was born male, which is completely not true. I am 100% biologically female. It makes me I'm upset even like that. To, to say a female is really a man is one of the cruelest things that you can say. And I will show you the proof too, for those who question it, the shoulder blade or the collar bones are something you cannot change in surgery. Okay. So a female, a natural born female has a collarbone that goes up in a V like that. So you see mine, mine goes up in a V. That's a female's collarbone. A male collarbone goes out to the side. You can't change that in surgery. And when I found out that this man, and, and, and I was told, I have not seen the photographs, but I was told that he had even like photoshopped pictures. Like it was obviously photoshopped it, photoshopped to make me look more masculine. I am like, I'm four, five foot, five foot four, five foot five, like 115 pounds. I'm, I'm very feminine. If you see me in person, my, my wrist, my hands are tiny. There are just certain things that um, you can't change with surgery. And so if you saw me in person, you would know I am very, very feminine. And um, I've never, that's never been questioned. Um, and um, it, it was very upsetting. Like I, I, I got very upset about it. I understand if you're a man and you think I'm ugly, that's fine. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But to say that I was born a man is horrific. And it's abuse. That is a man being very abusive towards a woman. Well, around the time that I found out that he had said that about me, I also found out that he was saying things about other women as well that wasn't nice. And so I had a problem with that. Um, for a, a man to be that abusive, to see a pattern, I, I saw a pattern where he was being abusive towards women, saying very horrific things towards women. Some of them were his moderators that were also working for free for him. So we're doing all of this work for free to help him build his channel. In the meantime, he's creating smear campaigns about us behind our back. And so obviously I quit the show. I sent him, I'm not going to do this for you. I'm not going to give my time and my energy when you're creating horrific stories about me and other women. And I understand that I have a bigger platform. I get that my name will draw in an audience. And I get that you're, you're, you're using this as clickbait, which a lot of these truthers do that, guys. A lot of these truthers will take a celebrity, create a story about them that's not necessarily true, something they've made up for clickbait. So that means that they're going to get more views. They could potentially make more money off of AdSense. So um, clickbait is used on all sorts of different platforms all across the internet. Um, it's, it's, I've tried not to do that because I want to, I, my, my purpose is to be very integral and to always try to be the most honest I can be at that moment of the information that I have. And, um, and people like a scandal, right? I, I see that, you know, a lot of these truther channels and a lot of the telegram channels that are quote unquote truther channels are, are nothing but gossip channels. That's all they really are is gossip channels, right? They're, they're not, they're not channels that are there trying to find a solution. They're not cha channels. They are trying to find for seekers to try to figure out how to um, fix the wrongs that have happened or, or um, um, anyway, no, he has, uh, he has not lost his channel, but we're going to continue um, to talk about this because it got worse. So I sent, when I found all this out, I sent um, Gordon a text with Kim, a joint text. And I just said, I'm not going to do the show anymore. And I expressed to him how hurtful that is to say that about somebody who was trying, not only was I not just, it's just hurtful in general to say, to, to make up lies about a person. It's all lies. It's complete lies. I have had my period since I was 12 years old. I am very much a female and um, it's just lies. And to know, um, Daniela, this is Gordon from Enough is Enough. And I, and I can safely say his name and say the channel because I have all the files here, I have two police reports, which we will get into why I ended up filing two police reports. So I sent a text to Kim and Gordon and I expressed my feelings that that was very extremely hurtful to, to create a false story, a lie about me 
Um, and I wasn't going to do a show anymore. I quit. I'm not going to do it anymore. Um, I'm, again, I'm grateful. I met a great Michael is awesome. He's going to help me that we are in the works, um, creating an esoteric Atlanta on telegram as well, that somebody else is going to run. I'm not, cause I can't be in multiple places at one time. I just can't. And so we are going to start to continue to do the shadow work shows. Cause I really truly did enjoy speaking to everybody and ha- trying to help people. That's, that's what I do off camera. Anyway, I'm the only authorized teacher in the state of Georgia. This is my job off camera is to help people help themselves and to get out of their own way. And for every single person to realize like how special you really are and that you are, you are the savior that you seek, you know, that's so, so I, I want to continue doing that. So I did enjoy that, but I'm not going to do it on enough is enough anymore because I mean, horrific. Like, what would you guys do? Like if somebody was doing this to you and you were doing all this work for free for them, you would probably quit too. And so I quit the show that was on a Wednesday. Um, and I, yeah, Steve, it was, I, I really enjoy it. Thank you, Steve. I really, really enjoyed, um, doing those shows and we are going to continue after Mercury retrograde. I was texting with the person that's going to help me, uh, yesterday and after Mercury retrograde is, is over the channel esoteric Atlanta on telegram has already been formed. It's just private right now because we got to get all our ducks in a row. Um, and I've already got, you know, so I've already got, we're going to continue with that because that's where my real I'm a weirdo. I like my deep dives into my weird stories, but I'm also, that's my, my heart and soul is really trying to help people. Um, I want to give people the same help that was given to me. I want to be, I I've had the privilege of being able to study under some of the top teachers in this world in India. I, I, and I, I really want to be able to, um, to be able to pay that forward for people, especially during this time of a great awakening. And so Steve, we will be getting back to that as soon as I know Mercury retrograde should be illegal. Yeah, it's almost over guys. It's almost over. Um, But Mercury retrograde is a good time to finish up finalized projects. So this is a good time for me to be talking about this because after I do this show, I'm not going to talk about this anymore because the police are handling it. So anyway, that was a Wednesday when I quit the show, I quit the show on a Wednesday. Um, After I sent that text, Kim Kukic, who has con- tried to convince the world that she is the great niece of Nikola Tesla. She's not. I've now learned that she is not. Um, she started to call me nonstop. And, and I picked the phone up and talked to her and I was expressed to her. I was like, Kim, this is not okay. Like what Gordon has done to me, the defamation that court Gordon has done, the slander, all of that stuff, saying that I am, I am a transgender when I'm not. Um, it's not okay. And I'm not going to, and, and I heard her on the phone. I had her on speakerphone. So my boyfriend was in the other room and he could hear what was going on as well. Cause she was on, sp- I mean, I, I speak to everyone on speakerphone nowadays, but she was on speakerphone and I could hear her, you know, when somebody's trying to create a story, a lie, you can hear it in their voice. So she said, Oh no, no. Gordon was commanded by Mr. T president T to create a false story about you because it's a military operation. And I said to her, I said, Kim, that doesn't make sense. Why in on God's green earth would President T, Mr. T, want to create a, a fake story, a lie about me, about my, my sexuality and my gender? What does that have to do with anything that's going on in the world? And she was like, no, it's just a military. Everything's a military operation with her. It's just a military. And I said, no, no, no. And at that, so I stood up to her. I I like, I said, no, I don't, I don't believe you. Like, this is bullshit. This is absolute bullshit. At that moment, my boyfriend walked in the room and he, um, and he looked at me and he said, you hang that phone up right now. She is gaslighting you. This is abuse. She is gaslighting you. My boyfriend doesn't really get involved, but so for him, and I could see the the, the anger in his eyes that he was so pissed off um, of what they were doing to me because he's the one that's with me. All he's the one that has to sit there while I'm working sixteen hours a day, right? He's he he's the other half of my life, and so he 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 gets the cause and effect. Like he feels the effects of my work on YouTube, and so. So I hung the phone up and I, I had to get on a live show. I was on a live show on somebody else's channel. So I had my cell phone, my cell phone sitting right here at my, at my desk. And I could see it as I was doing this live show on some, I was a guest on somebody else's channel. My phone was going off like crazy, nonstop ringing, just harassment, text messages from Kim. She finally sent me a message where she said, um, President 
Trump is demanding that you pick the phone up right now. Your, your commander in chief is demanding you pick the phone up. No, he's not. No, he's not. I'm not being paid by Mr. T. I'm not being, I, I, this is bullshit. I'm on a live show right now. That's, that's, that's unprofessional. I'm not going to pick my cell phone up when I'm in a, on a live show. So I, um, I basically, when the, 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 the channel that I was on, they had a promo in the middle of the episode, a lot of people do this where they have their sponsorship commercial. So when they play the sponsorship commercial, the guest goes off the channel, goes off the, the screen and as did the host. And so I was off screen. So I was off screen. I went, and I just blocked her. I just blocked her on my phone. I was done. That was it. Finished. End of story. I was done. So that was a Wednesday. Um, later on that afternoon, I remember going for a walk with my boyfriend and my dog and just talking about how I felt freed now. And now I knew that Kim was crazy and that she was a liar and that I was happy to be done with with those people. I, I remember expressing that I was sad to not be doing the shows anymore because I really liked the people, the audience, but I was excited to eventually have that on my own platform so that I could continue to help people, sincerely help people. Um, anyway, and so I went on with my life and I wasn't going to say anything about it. I wasn't going to bring it up on YouTube or anything. I was just going to move forward. And that Friday morning, though, I, um, oh, thank you, Ray. I got, I got, um, I, I woke up to all these text messages um, of people sending me screenshots that Kim Kukic, who claims to be a Tesla, she is not. She claims to be the secret military press secretary. She is not. Um, of her saying that I was involved in, um, I'm trying to be careful about how I say this because I'm on YouTube, that I was involved in um, child carpooling, we'll say. Um, and that I was the P word. I can't, again, I can't say that word on YouTube, but the disgusting P word. And I am not any of these things. Um, she started to claim that my um, foundation in India that I've, I, I started in 2015, that I'm very proud of, um, that I've worked very hard to help children in India. Um, she started to say that it was a um, Ghislaine Maxwell. It was like the, the Clinton Foundation. And she said that I had been doing this for 20 years. I have not. That You can look that up. I mean, you can do a background check on me. You can do a background check on anybody. And if you do a background check on me, you can see all this information. You can see when I started going to India. You can see when I found when the when the foundation was opened, all that kind of stuff. It's all out there. It's all public information. So um uh, la, la, la. yeah, yeah, Jan. Oh, girl, I've got, I've got uh, all sorts of stuff here. So I um, just kind of kept up with it. I ignored it for a while. And uh, the funny thing is, is Kim Kukic or Gordon, neither one of them ever has mentioned my foundation's name. Interesting, right? They talked about the Clinton Foundation, but they never mentioned my foundation. So that tells me they're making this shit up. Well, obviously, I know they're making it up. And what's so incredibly painful is I have literally, um, I have literally gone in and rescued children. I have done this. I, I have worked with a safe house. I've pulled dogs out of gutters. Like I've done the, the labor to protect. And this was before I even knew. I opened this foundation before I even knew how big of a problem this really was, right? And so the fact that she took something that I have worked so hard and has been such a positive experience and has done nothing wrong, has done absolutely nothing wrong, has done nothing but help people. The fact that she took it and she inverted, and this is why I know, I know for a fact, yeah, Jan, I think, I think Kim, I don't know, I'm not a therapist, but this is just my opinion. I think she's got either schizophrenia. I think there's something mentally wrong with her. I know she's narcissistic because she's following the narcissistic abuse, abuse, tactic playbook. That's what they do. Like that's what Scientology does. The minute I said no to her, the minute I told her, I don't believe you. The minute I blocked her, she fair gamed me. That's what Scientology does. She fair gamed me. She created all these stories, all these lies. So what started to happen though, is she kept going. Like it got to the point where it became um, classified as stalking and harassment. And she started to leave these voice recordings, which was stupid for her to do. Like, honestly, that was stupid. That's what's going to get her put away eventually because she has these voice recordings of her basically threatening bodily harm to me and to other people. 
And so when that started to happen, I started to also get threats from just random people who um, were believing everything she was saying without doing research, without having any proof. Um, And so that's when I went and filed a police report. And so I'm going to give you guys the number for the police reports so that you can um, you can look these police reports up yourself. The Atlanta, if I got, I got so much paperwork here, the Atlanta police uh, incident report, K, uh, criminal report is case number 231-540551. Again, that's 231-540551. That's with the Atlanta Police Department. Um, a, a p- officer actually came, uh, an incredible officer, an awesome police officer at the for the Atlanta Police Department, actually came over here to my house. And she was here for a couple of hours. And she went through everything that I had. And I like, and I will say, so I've got all these printouts. This is one where she said, per military and president, should Bryce Elizabeth Wat- Watson contact the police? They have been informed of her situation and that Kimberly Kukich Tesla, she's not a Tesla, is military and part of the Trump administration. When the cops saw that, she busted out laughing. <laughs> she started laughing so hard. And I, I, a, um, yeah, the dark always does come after the light, Heather, for sure. Um, and so, and so she literally took everything down. She videotaped everything. She listened to all the recordings. And then there's one recording where Kim says, I'm going to kill her. And she says my name and the cop goes, that's it. We got her. That's criminal. And so she took all that down. They have everything. They have, this is my copy. The cops have everything. Um, and then I started seeing other um, messages from this person. I'm just going to say your handle on Telegram because, you know, fuck you. Um, this woman named Shannon says, or no, uh, no, no, this is forwarded from Shannon says. It's from someone named Jill. Sorry, Shannon says you just forwarded this. Jill, fuck you, Jill, because this is what Jill said. Do you ever do your research or do you just take everything people say to be truth? Well, Jill, I'm going to ask you, Jill, Jilly Poo. What's the name of my foundation? If you've done your research on me, then what's the name of my foundation, honey? Because if you'd done your research on me, you would know all of this were lies. You're just taking what a crazy person is saying is truth. You're no different, Jill, Jilly Poo. You're no different than your friends and family who believe CNN all the time. You're no different. All right. Um, here we go. She said, do you ever do your research or do you just take everything people say is to be the truth? Try listening to Kim's messages on this chat or ask Gordon. Truth is out there. Miss Bryce will likely be swinging from a rope from her crimes against humanity. It has been stated that she is a child T word. And I would advise being cautious of stating things you don't know to be fact. Jill, if you, I, honey, Jill, the police have your information, Jill. You're in the police report too, darling. You might get some cops knocking on your door soon because that's considered in the state of Georgia to be a criminal threat, a criminal threat against somebody for bodily harm. Anyone can be caught in big trouble for their crimes. Jill, I've done, I have no criminal record, Jill. Jill, honey, I've done, I got no, if you actually, Jill, darling, darling. Again, fuck you, but if you've ever actually done research on me, my full name is out there. Bryce, that's my that's my legal name. Um, background checks, you can you can pay $25 and have a background check done on me. And you would get all your information. So Jill, take some uh, take some of your own advice and do your research because what you did, Jill, is purely satanic. You put somebody like myself's life in danger, Jill, an innocent person. And you, you wanted, um, you wanted me to be swinging from the trees, honey. That's, um, that's what the Nazis did. So Jill, if I were, if I were you, I'd be more concerned about my own mental. I I would go see a therapist, Jill, if I were you, because you've got some, some psychotic issues there. Um, all right. So thank you, Prison. There was a woman named Prison or a man named Prison. I don't know if it's a male or female said, well, you're both being distracted from truths and are way off base. Step away from the dist- Thank you, Prism, for depending me, for defending me. Um, we have all, I mean, multiple, I just have pages and pages and pages. Um she said here, Pedo bitch Bryce refused to talk. 
acknowledge, answer the phone when the military had me call her five times. No, it was way more than five times. It was it was borderline stalking at that time. So uh, again, Ken, Ken, Kim Kukic not only is saying I'm in trouble because of something I didn't do, but I'm also in trouble because I didn't pick the phone up when she called. Hello, narcissism. That's narcissism. All right. She also created a fake. This is in the police report too. She created a fake um, like note from the military. It's fake. It's not real. So that's that's punishable by law as well to create a fake one per military public notice of transparency addressed to myself and someone else. I won't say their names. I don't want to dox anybody. Um, Per a Space Force and all military personnel, the intel gathered since summer of 2022, the military has put together a case against, she's got some major grammar mistakes in this, major spelling mistakes, um, that I have committed treason um, because I said no to Kim. So basically, I committed treason because I refused to do the Enough is Enough show anymore because Gordon made up a lie about me. So that's apparently, uh, yes, Scott, exactly. That's what that is. 100% Scott. I can't say that on, um, on air, but if you guys see what Scott just wrote, that's exactly what that is. It's in all the police reports. Um, I have over almost over a thousand, um, just from this, when this is filed, there's been more since and over a thousand voice messages directly about me, which goes into the stalking. Um, there is one she posted here, um, that I was surrounded, uh, breaking news, I'm not going to say names. I don't want to dox anybody else. Surrounded by military. Arrest imminent. Part of Marlin's bitch. I don't even know who Marlin's bitch club is because I'm never on Telegram. So I have no idea who any of these other people are. Um, we have on you, per the military commander in chief, you cannot. Um, and I, I'm going to tell you, Kim, if you're watching, I'm sure you are, Darlin. If you're going to be the military press secretary, you might need to get some grammar lessons and spelling lessons. I know we all make mistakes and typos from time to time, but if you're going to take the job um, of being a military press secretary, you might want to learn how to spell because cannot is one word. C-A-N-N-O-T. That's one word. Cannot. Not two words. It's one word. Um so says, you cannot kill yourself. We will put you in a bed, stand trial at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. You are surrounded. Why am I going to get Mo? I've done nothing wrong. I've apps. The worst thing I've ever done is got, got a speeding ticket. Like that's the worst thing I've ever done is gotten a speeding ticket. All right. Um, here she says right here. Um, the president wants wants to make you see the flamingos on this. Bryce, your days are numbered. You will be arrested with everything straight off my phone. What? What's on your phone, Kim? Me telling you I'm not going to do Gordon's show anymore? Because that's what's on your phone. Yeah, Lisa, the angels are um, with me. Um, so uh, Brittany, cannot is one word. So can is, is C-A-N apostrophe T or cannot is one word. There's no space in between. It's C-A-N-N-O-T. Um, anyway, so um, now she's saying here under one of her other, she has lots of different names. One of them is Kim Ross. Um, she said, share this on all, all social medias, which is considered a attack if you get people to harass. And actually that's against YouTube's, uh, YouTube's platform. Um, is, and so she said, we have everything and Gordon, I want them arrested both today. Patriots take down esoteric Atlanta. So what Kim also fails to realize, and I learned this through the situation, if, as I said on my live video or my video yesterday, my channel update. So if you have over 10,000 subscribers on any social media platform, then you are considered to be a public person by law. So what that means is that there's different I don't want to say different laws surrounding you. It's just taken differently. Yes, Brittany, that's correct. Cannot. One word. Yeah. If it's, if it's, if it's can, it's apostrophe T. Anyway, I'm good. This is why I need a moderator because this is why I don't do lives all the time. So I'm constantly reading your comments and I get off track. But anyway, because I'm a public person, because I have over 10,000 subscribers, they, the law treats it a little bit differently. And I understand this because I am so public, because I have a platform, because I use my real name. Um, I am easier to find. So if somebody is threatening me, it is going to be easier to find me and hurt me than somebody who is a private person. Okay. So that makes sense. It, it does make sense. And that was the big concern. 
I know that Kim is crazy. I know that Kim is a pathological liar. I know that. A lot of people know that. And trust me, I have gotten so many amazing messages for you guys are awesome. I feel the love and the support. I've gotten so many, 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 um, just incredible messages of support. And so I, I thank you guys so much. And you guys have really helped me get through this, the trauma of that this has caused. Um, but the problem is, is that what's happening in enough is enough is it's turned into a fanatical cult. Um, it's following all the bite model, uh, everything with the bite model, it, it, it clicks those, those guidelines. And so what's happening is, is they're stirring up the emotions of these people that are in, like, like the Jills, um, that are in this cult. And so, and they're also believing that they are part of some secret military operation, which they're not. And so when you talk about hurting children, that's going to, that's going to stir up a lot of emotion within someone. And so the threat, the real threat, listen, last time I had lunch with Kim, she was negative $70 in her checking account. So I know that there's no way that Kim Kukic is going to be able to drive up to Atlanta and hurt me. However, she has about 5,000 followers in that Telegram group that could very well believe that they are on some mission from God and they're a secret military that could actually kill me. Um, that's the threat. And that's the, the it's, I was, I said to the Sarasota detective, which I'll give you that case number as well. I said to the Sar Sarasota detective yesterday that, um, that, uh, that when, when, um, I was looking at over the stuff. It feels very um, Charles Manson, like Manson family, um, where Charles Manson got people like like Kim is getting people very fanatical about a belief, and her members, her cult members, are then going to go out and do the killing. That's what it's starting to represent. So, um, you know, with enough is enough, I've also been told that when anybody disagrees or questions Kim or Gordon, they get blocked from the, the chat. So you can't question them. Um, yeah, uh, I've been told that she has said that my arrest is what's or my my imminent arrest is what's holding up the Nasara and the med beds. So that gets people upset that for some reason, because I'm three that they're not getting their money or their health back. So it's another, um, I had to explain that, like what that meant to people. And so I had to, um, yeah, yeah, they, they, they're not white hats. <laughs> yeah, they're absolutely not. They're delusional people. They're part of the problem. Um, they're just as evil. The people in this group that and I know a lot of people are in the EIE group chat, just watching because I have people believe it or not, guys, I've got some really incredible people in my corner and there are people out there. I'm not going to say their names, um, that are still in the, the chat that are under fake names that are pulling everything and putting it into files for me. So I don't have to see everything. And those people, one day I'm going to hug them so tightly because they have literally been what I've been. They, they, they have everything that the cops now can look through because they have stayed in that chat room and they have pulled everything aside and they have put it in a file. And so the police have everything. And I am so grateful to those, those awesome friends of mine. They knew that it was hard for me to see that stuff. It's hard to see that stuff written about you, especially when it's not true. And for a while I didn't say anything. I was completely silent because I was trying to gather everything and I was working with the police and um, getting everything squared away. And so I didn't say anything. I was kept very quiet. Quiet. And so they were the ones that were pulling everything for me. And I'm so grateful they're still in there. So I do understand that a lot of people who are, um, yeah, Valerie, they kick you out when you call out their bullshit, right? They like to censor. They love censorship. They are so, they are following the patterns of the cabal to a T. That's what's hysterical. They are mimicking. Um, one thing that Kim does, and I've tried to point this out, this one thing that she does, and I really hope you guys do study the law of one, because the law of one talks about this. She talks about how she is um, elite, that she is part of elite bloodline, that she is God's bloodline. In one post that is actually in the file, she says she is God on earth, that she is God on earth. Um, but that she's part of this elite bloodline, all this kind of stuff. And so that is creating what we call a pecking order, right? A pecking order. That is demonic. That's part of the fourth density negative. In the positive side, fourth density positive is a social memory complex. Everybody is the same. 
everyone's the same. We know that the cabal loves their bloodlines. We know the controllers love particular bloodlines. Well, so does Kim. Kim loves bloodlines as well. Um, we're all equal. We're all the same. We're all fractals of God, right? And that's something, even though I have delved heavily into bloodlines on my channel, I feel like I've been pretty good at saying like, these are the side effects of different blood types. However, everybody is equal. We're all fractals of God. And if I have not made that clear, then I apologize. Um, the law of one is positive. Uh, no, Brittany, it's, it's just a template. So there, the law of one talks about how there is a negative side and a positive side. So the they, they tell you what the negative side is, but they also tell you about the positive. So they, they're giving you both and they all come back to the great one. Right. So, um, so anyway, yeah, but it's, it's, it's great. The law of one is fantastic, but I, I, again, in my, on my channel, I hope that I have made it. Um, no, I'm referring to Kim Kukic. Um, I have made it very clear. I hope I've made it very clear that every single human being is equal in the eyes of God. Um, Valerie, a bloodline war. Um, no, I think that's what the, the controllers want. The controllers want that O negative bloodline, which is the bloodline I carry because there's nothing in it. And so they can manipulate it and use it for spiritual gains because O negatives tend to be more, um, psychically, uh, aligned, but it doesn't mean just because like I'm O negative, just because I have more paranormal experiences does not mean that I am any better than anybody else in this world. I am equal. We are all in this together. We all, every single blood type, every single bloodline has different benefits, has different abilities. Okay. All, we're all fractals of God. God doesn't make mistakes. So when you were created, whatever blood type you have is how you're, what you're supposed to have. That's how God created you. It's beautiful. Whether you're O positive or O negative or A positive, it doesn't matter. You're beautiful. You're awesome. That's what, because what matters is that fractal of light that's inside of you that has actually nothing to do with your avatar, right? The avatar, the blood type is just giving you an experience. Um, so, so it, it, that's all it is. But, but Kim is obsessed with bloodlines. She wants to be the elite. She, every, I didn't realize, again, I had no idea. I had no idea what was going on. Um, on Telegram, without me, I had no idea um, what they what what she had been doing on Telegram because I'm never on Telegram. I had no idea that all the shit show that was just happening, and I still am not 100% sure. Um, oh, I just um, oh okay. Angie and I will probably have to reschedule our Barbie movie, so it's okay. It's Mercury retrograde, so I had no idea what was going on with the um with the uh, the um. What was going on on Telegram? I had no idea what's what she was saying. What was I, I just I didn't know because I was on YouTube. I didn't know. Um, and then when I started listening to all these voice messages, I was like, "What the fuck is this? This is delusional." Um, and so anyway, so I have I mean just piles and piles of stuff here. Um, I have uh, let's see, uh, d calling for people to destroy me. Um, yeah, all this stuff. The police have everything. Uh, two states now have all of this information. There, One message was hysterical. I told you guys that I had blocked her on my phone on that Wednesday. Still have her blocked on my phone. And there was a voice <laughs> message where she said that I was like blowing her phone up. And then she posted pictures of her text messages to me. And it's all her texting me. So it was like, surely people would see that and realize that she was the one texting me. I wasn't blowing her phone up at all, um, that, that she caught herself out in a lie. But, but people just want to hate, right? People have a hateful heart. Um, and people who have hateful hearts will look for someone to hate. And unfortunately, a lot of the people in Enough is Enough, of course, not the people who are there that are just there watching and pulling information. They're not hateful, but a lot of the hateful people and they're just hateful people and they just want to hurt somebody. They just, they're, they're, they're picking their pitchforks up and they're doing vigilante violence, which the law of one states that vigilante violence is part of the negative side. That's negative side. Um, Hey, Michael. Yep. There's Michael. So yes, yes. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I have all this information guys. All of it's here. Uh, it's crazy. I have every single person that has um, pitched in to the violence is in here as well. Um, so if you are in the Enough is Enough group and you have contributed to threatening me or other people, the cops have that as well. So don't be surprised if you get a knock on the door from police at some point. Uh, but we know that the 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 um, 
wheels of justice do turn slowly. We know that. Look how long it took Danny Masterson. It took years to get Danny Masterson um, convicted of his crimes. Um, the Sarasota Police Department, I filed with them as well because that's where she lives. And so I filed with Sarasota. The, the case number for Sarasota is 2361014. So again, the Sarasota case number is 2361014. Um, the Sarasota police were familiar with her. They did know who she was. They've had problems with her in the past. So um, the deputy that I spoke to originally at the Sarasota Police Department was really, really kind. And I will say that um, I know I know that um, the police get a lot of shit. I know that. And I'm struggling right now because I want them to move faster than they're moving. But I do understand that there is um, a lot of bureaucracy and red tape. And But the female officer that I worked with here in Atlanta was amazing. She was fantastic. And um, the deputy that I originally spoke to in Sarasota, he actually came out behind the desk and like sat beside me. And he was so kind. And I ended up crying. I started crying because just the stress. And I just, I said to him, I was like, I feel like this isn't going to end until, um, and uh, yeah, Michael, we have it all. Pinky and Gordon, we have it all. Um, I, I said, I felt like I was going to get killed, that the end of this was going to be bloodshed um, because of the allegations that she had um, accused me of with no proof and people were believing her. And um, he was very sincerely kind and he sat with me and he really, so I am, I'm big fans of the Sarasota police department. Um, they were just in the detective that I've been speaking with there um, that I went on to speak with. He's been very kind as well. And um, I'm going to get emotional just how kind they've been. And um, I know that they, that they have to work things in a certain way. I get that. And I just, um, I feel like they don't get as much uh, praise as they should. And um, the fact that none of the police officers, not in Atlanta, not in Sarasota, even batted an eye at the allegations that she had um, accused me of. They didn't even bat an eye, um, didn't even bother them whatsoever. Now, with that being said, when you go into a police department and when you talk, they do run your driver's license. So anytime you go into police department, they are going to run your driver's license. So obviously they knew that there was nothing, you know, I have nothing on me. There's nothing on my driver. You know, there, there's no record. Um, but I, I really appreciate, um, appreciate, oh, hey, Sarah, love you too, Sarah. We're going to get Sarah back on the show soon. It's been crazy because I got sick. So, um, um, and so um, he told me, they told me too, that they were very careful with confronting people like her because they didn't want to like uh, set her off. Um, I have also though, on the flip side, I've been told by people here in Georgia that I needed to start speaking up because what would happen is if I started speaking up, um, that, uh, that it would trigger her. And if it triggered her to act, um, that they could get, they could actually act in an emergency situation. So there's lots of stuff. Um, I, I had to assure them that I do have, we have two of these here, two of these in our house. So they, they asked, but I think it was both. I, I know Atlanta asked, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, Sarasota asked too, if we had means of protecting ourselves. And, um, and so, yes, we do have means. And, and the, the police were very supportive of that, that we had the means. The, the cop here in Atlanta did um, look through my property to make sure that she felt comfortable with the security that I have, that um, I would not, that it would be, make sure that there was some, like if somebody were to figure out my address, where I live in Atlanta that they, you know, she checked it out and she said, no, your, 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 um, complex seems very secure. So, um, just make sure that you have your, uh, your weapons on you at all times. And, and you call immediately if there's, if you sus suspect somebody is, um, is, is stalking you or you feel like you're going to, that this is a, a cult member that's about to hurt you. But it's been, I will say like every time I go out with my boyfriend and my dog now, I, I get a little bit nervous on um, that somebody is going to hurt me. Um, that somebody is is stalking me from this group. But yeah. So anyway, so with that being said, when I get Angie back on, we will talk about the Barbie movie. And I, I thought this was a good opportunity to talk about my story. Um, aw. Yeah, Katie, one day we will, I don't feel so brave. I feel like I've had to be, I feel like I had no other choice but to be brave. And I have an amazing uh, partner. I have an amazing boyfriend. Um, 
who has been just so unbelievably, he never, I'm going to tell you guys something. My boyfriend never liked Kim or Gordon, never liked them. He was always very um, weary of me being involved with them. And so I think I will be listening to him um, <laughs> going forward. But, um, you know, with that being said, you know, when, when I when I talk about like the Barbie movie or Margot Robbie or any of these actors, just knowing my own, you know, we need to have um, empathy and compassion for people. And just because somebody's an actor does not mean that they are part of this nefarious group. Um, the Barbie movie was awesome. It was like the Velveteen Rabbit. There was a lot of the same um, storyline of the Velveteen Rabbit. Like, what does it mean to be a human being? Um, the history of Barbie. The the opening scene was uh, fantastic, where it, it talked about um, it talked about stay, uh, how when a uh, little girls for a long time always have played with dolls, but it wasn't until Barbie came along that it was it was all the, the dolls they played with was always baby dolls. So the only thing a girl could play was being a mom. And when the Barbie came along, it gave girls a different perspective of, of who they were as women. And I thought that was so amazing. Um, I, yeah, it, it was amazing. It was, it was such, it, there was deep philosophical stuff there as well, as far as like the end scene, um, which I'll talk more about with Angie, with the, the character that the, the creator of Barbie is talking to Barbie and um, Barbie's like, what's my ending? And she said, I didn't create you to, I mean, emotional to have an ending. Human beings have endings. Ideas don't. And that was so powerful. And um, Margot Barbie asked, um, can I, can I become real? Can I become a human at the very end? And the creator said, you don't need my permission to be human. You know, the essence of you, you, you don't, you don't become a human. You discover you already are one. And, um, yeah, the Barbies are a toy for little girls, that little girls that grow up to be women like myself. I loved Barbie. And um, I heard somebody say once about Barbie too for little Barbie is what we projected all of our hopes and dreams on as children. When we were little girls playing Barbie, we projected what we wanted to be as a woman, as a woman. And that 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 quote was so true. It's it's what I I thought when I was playing Barbie. I was projecting what I wanted as a little girl when I saw myself growing up to be a woman. And I know a lot of truthers complained about, no, Luna, it's not a false idol. It's a toy. I'm no, let's, uh, let's see here. I think you, I'm just going to block you. Yeah. We're just going to block you, Luna. Bye. Because we're not dealing with that, with that shit. Um, we're going to celebrate our humanness and, and all that stuff. Um, no, I don't think Brittany, I don't think it was, um, uh, I don't think it was for kids either, Brittany. It was very adult in its its concepts. And I know a lot of people are mad because they made the Kins like dummies. Uh, get off of it. Okay, the, guys, listen. These toys, they make it very, 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 it's very clear in the beginning of the movie that these are children playing with Barbie and Kins. When you're a little girl, take it from a little girl. I You don't hear little girls saying, I'm going to go play Ken. No, they're they they go play Barbie and 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 Ryan Gosling did an incredible idea, a, a incredible job playing Ken. My my boyfriend actually watched it with me and he he was kind of like eh, whatever, but he laughed hysterically at Ryan Gosling did such a good job. And at the end, it, it is they they try to figure out this balance between the masculine and the feminine. But it's like little boys. Little boys are playing GI Joe. They're not playing GI Jane. They're playing GI Joes, right? So it's coming from the perception of the child. And so Ken was um was the accessory of Barbie. Like that's what Ken was. He was Barbie's accessory. Barbie was, was the main for, for a little girl, you know, little girls don't play Ken. I told you guys, I think I told you guys when I was growing up and I had my Barbie dream house and my Barbies, I had tons of Barbies. My, I had like two or three Kens, but mostly Barbies. Um, my Ken, I never put clothes on Ken <laughs> because I, his, his plastic legs, like trying to put the pants on, pull the pants up, his plastic lands was legs were way way too hard. And so all of my Kens were perpetually naked. They just had pretend clothes on. Barbie was always dressed, but Ken, you know, but Ken was, was, um, Ken was the, uh, was the side, he was the accessory. And so it, it, um, it, it was, it was, but I'll get more into that with Angie in our next episode. Um, but I wanted to use my story. I hope that I'm not a lie. I don't do lives. So, um, yeah, Steve, Ken never skipped leg day. Listen, Ken was sporting skinny jeans 
for men before skinny jeans were popular. Um, so, so that was really hard, like to get those putting clothes on Ken took away it took so long it took away from my valuable time as a child playing with barbie and so ken got pretend clothes um you know even the fact that in the barbie dream house they didn't put stairs and they even talk about how when little girls are playing barbie they don't like if barbie's in the bedroom and the little girl decides now barbie's gonna get in her car and drive somewhere they don't walk barbie down the stairs right they they put they just put 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 her in the car and so they show that of them just being put in different skipper um skipper is in the movie you do see skipper you see midge i remember midge um you see uh weird barbie was fantastic weird barbie that one barbie that every little girl has that just gets beaten up and haircut and colored on and smells like urine and you know um anyway but uh, i will go deeper into that with angie on our next live stream maybe we'll see if angie wants to do that on her channel we'll see we'll see um so anyway i would highly recommend seeing it it is a huge uh there's huge philosophical points in there um it it's it's um margo did an incredible job and basically at the end we're not our jobs we're not our talents we're not our looks we are a human being and that's the essence of um yeah they did have elevators i, I some of the houses did have elevators in them um we're human we're and our spirit can't be defined by by um it's okay angie it's mercury i, I haven't seen all your texts or all your text messages yet it's mercury retrograde it's fine girl we'll do we'll do a part two with the bar we'll talk more about it um but i i i wanted to start um yeah I'm so sorry. Y'all send Angie's dog some love, um, some, some healing vibes. Poor thing. Um, Alan is in there. Yeah, they do show Alan. <laughs> I didn't see a Ricky, but they did show Alan. Um, you guys, uh, it's, yeah, send Angie's dog some, some healing light. That's very sad. It's, dogs are so that was one thing I will say with my situation there was one. I have it in my file somewhere where one person talked about who was going to get my dog. Once I had been arrested, oh, for the person who wrote that, fuck you. You're never touching my dog. You're not. The person who wrote that, you're you're never going to be in the vicinity of me or my dog. Screw you. That was awful that you said that. And I hope to God, if anybody from Enough is Enough is watching right now and you're starting to have some realizations that you got tricked and you were lied to, I hope to God this is a learning lesson for you. You don't accuse people of these horrific crimes unless you have the proof. Kim has never once given you any proof because there is no proof. She's telling you she, she's never even spoken to Trump. She doesn't know Trump. She tells you she hears the telepathic voices in her head, guys. I believe in telepathy, but what she's hearing is voices in her head. She um, Back in July, she was admitted into a mental institution for a week because she threatened to um, she threatened to uh, remove her family and herself from the earth, if you guys know what I'm saying, to unalive herself and unalive her family. And so they threw a judge threw her into a mental institution for a week. Then she came out and said that she was undercover for a military operation. No, she wasn't. Come on, you guys. No, she wasn't. All right. And, and that might be where she ends up is in a mental institution. At this point, pleading insanity would be the best for her. I don't know what Gordon's excuse is. I am also talking to lawyers about civil cases, um, but I'm trying to figure some things out with the civil cases. I also don't want to um, don't want to interrupt um, the criminal cases because the criminal cases are way more important. And um, I, I want to. Uh, so. Back to what I was saying, I, I wanted to tell my story just to give you guys an example as to why we cannot judge these Hollywood actors unless we have proof. It's not fair. It's not fair. Somebody was out there saying Margot Robbie was really a man. No, she's not. Look at her collarbones. Do you know Margot Robbie personally? Has she told you this personally? Because if she hasn't, stop it. How, how would you like... How would you like it if somebody said that about you? Put yourself in their shoes. And I actually asked Gordon that. When I confronted Gordon about him saying that about me, I asked him, how would you like it, Gordon, if I said that you were really a female? How would you like that? I would never do that, though. That's the difference between Gordon and me. I would never do that. 
And so anyway, um, I wanted to tell that story so that we can really move forward. And I know I'm preaching to the choir. I know I'm pre I know you guys are all really cool and you totally know what I'm saying. And we don't judge people unless we need facts. We need proof. Anybody who's an actor or a musician does not mean automatically mean that they are bad. Um, a person who's a doctor doesn't mean that they're automatically bad, right? That this is, that's, that's ridiculous. Um, this us versus then mentality, that's cult behavior. That's what cults do. All right. And, and think about this with common sense, common sense, you guys just I know common sense ain't so common anymore, but it's common sense. Right. What they do, I'm going to reiterate this. What they do religiously is so horrific that they have to keep it a secret. Not many people are a part of it. All right. So we have to be fair to these people. Um, Ryan Gosling is a father himself. Like, are you I just I just I just really pray that people we, we put we be human beings and we think about these actors and these musicians as other human beings and do unto others. I know I'm not a fan of the Bible, but I do like that verse do unto others as you would have them do unto you. How would you like it? If what was done to me was done to you, how would you like it? I know I was telling my boyfriend last night that bless his heart. We were like, before we watched that documentary, we were sitting in bed and I was like, I need you to be like really patient with me because I uh, just recapping everything I had been through. I was like, I think I've just got some trauma too that I'm going to have to like figure out and work through again. I mean, I've already been through trauma therapy once because all this has been very traumatic. Um, and so, um, yeah. And so I would say too, um, if you guys, you can call the Sarasota police department, if you have had issues with Kim and Gordon, um, cause there's already, you can give that case number if you want to, it's case number again with Sarasota 2361014. They're more active than the Atlanta police. So if you've had an issue with Kim or Gordon doing something to you that you felt like was threatening, please call the authorities. Um, it might take a while for things to get done, but the more paperwork, the better, um, this person, it's one thing to have a mental disorder and to um, believe your own delusions. It's another thing for those delusions to start actually threatening the safety and the well-being of innocent people. So I would definitely, um, I would definitely, if, if you feel like you've been threatened, if you feel like there's been an issue, I would definitely call and at least get that paperwork in there. Um, when I communicate with the detective in Sarasota, I've spoken to him on the phone before, but I like to email him because then I have it in written. I have all the written accounts of everything. So, um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah. And just be careful guys. If you're, if you are involved in a telegram group and they're saying some, um, and they're saying some some not so good things about someone without proof. Just be careful. Just be very careful and, and take everything with a grain of salt. Again, I am so grateful to all of you guys for your support. Obviously, I've done nothing wrong. There's going to be no arrest because I've done nothing wrong. And I'm in constant contact with the police. I'm in constant contact with the police because of this. So there's no, there's nothing, I've done nothing wrong. Um, I thank you for your continued support of my foundation. This one, that's the thing that I'm the most proud of in my life is, is creating that foundation and actually getting in there and really helping children. Um, it, 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 it's just because she said bad things about it doesn't mean it's true. Again, she doesn't even know the name of the foundation, which is hysterical that she's trying to say it's a terrible thing and she doesn't even know the name of it. And um, if she did know the name of it and she said the name of it, then people could just look it up and they would know that she was lying. Um, so, oh, I also want to, uh, promote quickly. There is a, um, let's see, talked about, yep. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. All right. So I got to stop watching the comments. So I, I don't get distracted. So there is a documentary that's coming out. I believe I'll have to go back and check my emails. Um, September 24th. Now, this is a kind of a crazy story. We can go into it deeper with Angie, but I'll just kind of give the Cliff Notes version um, as of uh, today. Um, I was, I got in contact or a report or investigator from CNN contacted me months back. And I know CNN, right? But I, I actually had to make my own advice with this. So I, I find it kind of comical. So this guy from CNN reached out to me a few months back because they were making a documentary regarding the negative 48 cult. And he 
wanted to speak with me. And I didn't have really any information to give him because I told him I had done like I did the Jesus strand with negative 48. But that was it. I never met him. I never I did a few shows with him. But that was it. I didn't actually. And that's the thing to you guys when you run a YouTube channel, you will have people come on your show that you think are interesting. And they're going to say some things that you don't necessarily agree with. And that's okay, because we don't all agree with everything. And so there was a lot that he had said that I didn't actually agree with. When we did the Jesus strand, I still stand behind my research on the Jesus strand that I did the missing books of the Bible and Mithraism. That's I still stand behind that. But everybody else's research, I wasn't privy to everybody else's research. Um, I didn't know what they were going to be presenting until we filmed. And so there, if you have questions about their research, you'll have to ask them. Toronto, I got to know Toronto really well. I freaking love Toronto through that project. So made a friend from that project. But after the Jesus strand, I kind of went my separate way from negative 48. Didn't, you know, did not go to Dallas Did not. I never thought Kennedy was the reincarnation of Jesus. Never believed that. Um, but you know, I, so I didn't really have anything to offer. Um, not a huge fan of Gematria, especially I always kind of felt like his Gematria was a little bit manipulated because you could make it say whatever you wanted to say. Like you could really like, there was, there, you could make it say anything you wanted to say. So anyway, um, so I just kind of moved on and kept doing my thing. And, uh, and then all of a sudden this like cult formed in Dallas and I, um, I told the guy at CNN, I was like, I really don't have anything to give you. Like, I don't know anything about the people in Dallas. I never met negative 48 in person. In fact, I will tell you guys, like I, he would text me, negative 48 would text me privately. When he would text me, I never responded. I would only talk to him in a group chat. Maybe that, maybe I knew something in my gut was wrong because I would only speak with him in a group chat. I would never talk to, I would never respond to his text me messages privately. So anyway, um, but anyway, I got to know this guy. I actually ended up going over down to CNN and I actually gave him information on, um, uh, this situation with Kim too, because of the whole Q thing and like the connection to negative 48. And so, um, and I, 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 I told him, I told him that I didn't really trust CNN. Like I was very honest. I was like, you know, dude, CNN's not, <laughs> not, not, um, not, uh, not the greatest of, of, of news outlets, but I'm going to take my own advice, right? Like not everybody who works for CNN is a bad person. Not everybody who works for Fox is a bad person. And I'm really, really glad I took my own advice because this, I won't say his name because he's behind the scenes investigator, but this guy I got to know at CNN, um, he showed me around, he showed me the newsroom. It was really cool. And he was a really cool guy. And my boyfriend went with me and when we left CNN, and he was like, that guy was really cool. And I was like, yeah, I know. He was really cool. And I'm really glad that I didn't reject like getting to know him just because of who he works for. And he was aware. He's aware that there's, you know, and and so so I, I took my own advice. And he sent me an email yesterday and he they they were making this this documentary about the negative 48 cult and basically about the families that have been affected by this cult. And it got postponed because of negative 48's passing. So they put they they put it off for a few months out of respect to the passing of 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 negative 48. Um, but it's airing on the 24th of September. So I think I'll have to double check that it's in my email, um, which I can't get to right now, but I, he, I will double check that. So, um, please watch it. You guys, I know it's CNN. I know there's probably going to be some things that you're like, Oh, maybe that's not hundred percent true, but that's okay. The people behind this documentary are really good people. And I will say the guy that I was talking to who helped create the documentary, he was so compassionate towards um the people he was it, it was really emotional like sitting in his office hearing him talk about um the people that he'd gotten to know and he explained like he understood the religious uh lore and he got that because he also has a faith i won't say what his faith is but he also um it's okay angie i couldn't get the zoom to work i think it's mercury retrograde so we'll do part two um we'll do part two later on it's no big deal girl i gotta get off soon anyway because i have another show um, I've also got to go to the post office and mail something to Tamara in Australia. So um, I actually went and got a t-shirt for her. Um, anyway, I'm sure she'll show you when she gets the t-shirts. I have to go to the post office in a minute before I do my next show to mail this to Australia. So um, anyway, um, 
Um, so this guy from CNN, he was so much more like us, like you guys, like myself, than I've ever given anybody from CNN credit for. And so if you are watching, because the guy knows my channel, if you are watching, I won't say your name, I apologize to you for having an immediate reaction when you reached out to me from CNN. And even though I still don't like CNN, I really like you. And I'm, my boyfriend thinks you're super cool, too. And I think that you keep doing your thing, God, dude, because... Uh, you know, you are out there trying to help people. And he was very compassionate towards everybody involved. And he didn't, he didn't say anything negative about Trump or anything like that. It was just very much, um, it was just very much, uh, oh, that's so sweet, Katie. Um, it, he was, it was just very much about the human being. So I hope that makes sense, guys. I'm not really a live person. So I hope I didn't ramble too much. Normally when I do my deep dives, I have everything organized in a trajectory. So, um, Michael, thank you so much, Michael. I love you too, Michael. And uh, Michael's going to be helping me with the Esoteric Atlanta Telegram group soon, guys, so we can continue privately connecting um, with the shadow work because I can't be... Oh, that was one thing that cracked me up. They said that I was trying to take over the Enough is Enough Telegram group, which makes me laugh because I can hardly keep up with... Um, with uh, with my own YouTube channel. I mean, I can't, why am I going to take over a Telegram group? And I have way more, way more subscribers. So like, why would I even, it, it was just ridiculous anyway. But I love you guys so much. And you guys mean the world to me. I, I even though we get our trolls, um, which I just had to block one, I am so grateful to, um, to all of you guys uh, for being the best audience on, on, um, on the internet. And for really being an incredibly awesome community of very compassionate people. Um, I thank you guys for, for being on this journey with me and helping me. Um, you guys help me so much. You have no idea. I'm going to get emotional. My boyfriend told me not to get emotional. And here I am getting emotional. Um, <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Candy. Um, you guys are so when you leave these incredible comments, even when you guys are like talking to each other and leaving supportive comments for each other in the comment section, I see that. And it means the world to me because you guys, I'm going to get emotional. You guys are so loving and you are so supportive to each other and you are so caring. And that's the world. That's the world that we want to walk into where we all are fair. We don't judge each other. We, we are compassionate. We, we, we take accountability for our own selves. Um, that's the world that we're all going into. And I, I thank you guys so much for being the, the silver lining on everything. And I'm excited to see what the future holds. And I'm excited to see uh, when that fourth density positive comes and, um, and that we can all just put all this nastiness behind us and move forward into a really positive, wonderful, wonderful world. And you guys are, just because I'm sitting up here on YouTube, my face is on camera, doesn't mean anything. You guys are the rock stars. You guys are truly, 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 um, truly the rock stars and, and, and the warriors in this. And I, I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Um, I, again, as I said yesterday, I'm not going to be, Oh, thank you, Laura. That's so kind of you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to get super emotional. I'm not going to be posting any videos until Tuesday of next week. I said this yesterday, just, um, because I am shadow banned right now. And so I'm trying to let the channel rest. That was advised to me was to let the channel rest for a few days just to kind of get the, um, get the algorithms back. So, um, so if, if you don't see me post for a few, I'll still be going on other channels and stuff, but if you don't see me post for a few days, that's why I'm just, let, I'm doing it intentionally, um, just to allow the uh, algorithms to rest. Also, before I sign off, if you have not seen the Tom Palladino video, please watch it because he is offering 15 days of free scalar light therapy for you guys so watch that video share it with your friends and family he's been doing scalar on me it's amazing so please go check it out he's awesome he's going to come back on the channel in a few weeks time just to kind of get so you guys can send us your feedback so we can look through your feedback of how you experienced this tesla technology that's meant to heal people so please go check out that video on um, the tesla technology video with tom paladino if you haven't yet uh what did you say let's do this again with davy as ken angie I, I okay davy yes 
I freaking love Davey, and I know you do too, Angie. I and I'm grateful that my boyfriend is okay with me having male friends because I think Davey is hysterical. He's going to be in Macon. If you miss, I've got two episodes with Davey in my video from the IBLP. Um, his channel is great. He's gonna be in Georgia, I think the first week of November in Macon for a stand-up comedy show. So I think Angie, we should definitely we should do an esoteric Atlanta field trip for anybody in the area to go to Macon to see uh, to see Davey do his thing. So uh, he's hysterical. He is. Um, ah, <laughs> you think I've been scaring Davey? Davey? No, I think he, you're fine. You're a fine girl. So anyway, you guys. Well, I as always, I love you guys. I hope that wasn't rambling too much. And we will, Angie. Let's do. Let's plan our part two. And we may maybe we can do it on your channel, Angie. The part two of the Barbie movie. So. Anyway, you guys, love you guys. Check out the CNN documentary. Um, keep loving each other. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye, everybody.